Hi guys, and welcome. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I make these here. These are little hold down blocks I use on my machine. I make it from a waste material used in signs. It goes by the name of SignX, and once I've finished machining the sign, I find any space I've got left over and just cut blocks out of it for use on my table before I throw it away. If you do it there and then while it's still on the table, you don't need to go to the trouble of resetting the machine up to cut these out. And when you're finished, instead of storing them for six months until you're ready to sit down and do it, you can immediately throw it away and not have to store it. So let's have a look at how I make them. I have this material left over from my job I've done. It's about 5 8 of an inch thick or 15 millimeters. Now really it's not much use for anything. There's only small bits of material left on here. But in actual fact it's just ideal for making these here. Problem is I don't want to go to the trouble of creating a file to cut out clamps on the material. To make life easy what I've done is I've created two files. One with a clamp in the horizontal position and one with it in the vertical position. All I have to do is check what one is best for me to cut out, whether I want to cut out several horizontals or a couple of verticals or, or what have you. And then I can bring in my template, like so. Now this template here has a hole, the diameter of the cutter in it. If I bring my cutter in, I can put the cutter in the center hole there, and then I can just carefully move my template to where I want it to be. At this stage, I'll set my X and Y to zero. I already have my Z set at minus 15 when the cutter's sitting on the table. I don't need to readjust that. With this now done, I can lift the cutter up, remove my template, and machine my part. I can quickly and easily remove the item with a chisel. And there we have it here. I can now clean this up on my router table. I'm using a three millimeter round over bit to remove the holding tabs and round over the top. last thing I need to do is get a knife and just quickly scrape around the top edges here just to get rid of anything that's left over there and at the bottom like so. Using this method I can very quickly go through this material and cut out a heap of clamps without having to go to a lot of trouble to do it. That's as far as I want to go with having them in a horizontal position. I'm now going to change to vertical again. It's simply a matter 
of changing the file that I cack. You notice that the origin point is always in the center of these files. So I've now managed to get 16 hold down clamps out of this piece of scrap material, all without having to create special files to do it, done quickly and efficiently. They take less than two minutes to complete the cutting and routing the edges. To finish each clamp off, all I need to do is take a bolt, a washer, and a wing nut. And that gives me my hold down for the table. Let's take a closer in-depth look at the clamp itself. There really is very little that's critical about this design. The first part of it is the slot here. Now that's determined by the bolt that I use, and the bolt is determined by the slots in my machine. In my case, this is an 8mm bolt with a corresponding 8mm slot. The original design I copied this from had a quarter inch slot here and used quarter inch bolts. Here we have a quarter inch instep here and just over a quarter of an inch of material left here for strength for when it comes to clamping it down. You don't want this bit too thin but again it's not critical how thick this is so long as it's got enough strength not to break off when it's under pressure. Likewise, the length and width of this here is not critical. I stuck with the original drawing dimensions and I found these to be good, but maybe one day it wouldn't hurt me if I made a couple a little bit longer, they might come in quite handy. More critical is the material you make it out of. I originally tried these out of MDF and I found that they would actually delaminate along this point here when it was under pressure because the top part would bend, the bottom part wouldn't, it would just basically fall apart. Plywood would probably be a better material. Uh, plastics, hard plastics like this here, if you listen while I knock these together, you can hear that they're quite a quite a hard plastic and I think that's just great for this application. It provides plenty of strength without having to worry about them breaking. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe you'll look at making some of these yourself. If you'd like to do so, I've put a link in the description box below to where you can download the files and cut your own. A big thanks to Joe from joecnc.com allowing me to butcher his drawings and present the offspring to you here. In my next video, I'm going to show you how I use these clamps in my day-to-day -day machining, as well as a few other hold-down methods I occasionally use when these clamps just don't do the job. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to me on YouTube and follow me on Google+. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Cheers. Anyone want to play hold down Jenga?